Now, here's something I wanted to talk to you guys about. I just flew up here to fucking Winnipeg. And I don't know what happened. But the fucking level of animal that was on my flight. Dude, this guy next to me, you know, I told you, I ride up front. I don't even call it first class. It's just human class. They treat you like a human being. That's all that happens up front if you ever wanted. They don't smash you all in the back and all that shit, right? So I'm waiting to get on, right? So they have people with wheelchairs. They get on first. Then, you know, fucking people with kids. If you're in the military, you know, if you're wearing a red shirt, they got like a bunch of things, right? So people who are sitting in first class, they're getting all huffy. Going, when's first class going to board, right? (laughs) You know that white guy with the loafers and no socks, like that fucking energy, right? So we're going to get on in this fucking fat fuck, you know, in his 20s, just completely blown out body, big, giant, fat boys. I'm a Hollywood producer, fucking glasses, stupid hat, wearing sweatpants and some big, comfy fucking shirt. You know, just giving into the fact that's why he's fat. All these fat people that wear comfortable clothes, you're going to be fat forever because you're because you're never you're not uncomfortable. You got to keep the clothes that you had when you were that weight. You don't go to the fucking dry cleaner or go to the goddamn Nike store and buy yourself a giant fucking sleeping bag with drawstrings on it because you're never going to really feel how fat you are until you don't go to get on a fucking airplane. Right. So, I'm, so this guy's trying to cut the fucking line, right? And, uh, you know, I sort of box him out. And uh, they scan my thing, and I get a, go to get on the flight. And this fucking fat fuck comes down the thing, and he literally he gets on the plane. He goes, where am I sitting up front? Like, really, like, like weird. Like, you can't just look at the lady, like, looks at the ticket, and he's fucking sitting right next to me. So I'm putting my shit in the overhead compartment. He just goes, excuse me. And he fucking goes to brush right by me. I said, hey, buddy, I go, watch out for my bag. And he's like, oh, sorry. He kind of backed back out again, you know? He wasn't going to hit my bag. I just didn't like how he fucking brushed right by me, right? So he sits down, right? This giant fucking snowman-looking douchebag, right? Sits down. And he's so fat. I'm in first class. He's still spilling into my seat. Fucking elbowing me and all that type of shit. It's just like... This is not what I'm spending my sky miles on, you know? So um, the lady, the stewardess comes over. She goes, you know, can I get you guys something to drink, right? I order a drink, and the guy goes, can I, can I have a blanket? They go, she goes, yes. Yeah. So when she comes out with the blanket, she holds it out to him. He just fucking rips it out of her hand and, like, opened it up. And just the way he was so choppy and, like, aggressive – yet couldn't find his seat. I I was like, this guy, I don't know what this is. I don't know what the fuck this is. Is this guy on drugs? Is he autistic? Is it Asperger? I don't fucking know because I don't really know what the symptoms of any of that shit is. You know, I saw the Rain Man and, uh, you know, I don't know what else. I fucking went on a podcast one time with somebody at Asperger. I can't fucking tell. I just don't know that they act a little off. All right, and I'm not going to be yet another douchebag who doesn't have a psychology degree let alone practicing in that profession to start analyzing somebody's mental situation. So then he fucking sits there, okay? And he rips the the blanket open because somehow this tub of shit is going to get fucking cold. And uh, he starts doing the, uh, what's that thing where you, 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 restless leg syndrome. Except his leg weighs as much as my entire body. So it's like actually shaking the plane. And uh, fortunately, it was a red eye. I'm like, God, you know, let this fucking guy just go to sleep. But then is he going to have sleep apnea? I don't know what. Long story short, we finally end up, I connected in Minneapolis. Okay. And I, when I got up, I deliberately stood in a way where he couldn't get out of his seat. Because I knew he was going to brush by me once again and be fucking rude. Whatever the fuck his deal is. So I passive aggressively stand there. So I get off the plane. I'm like, great, I don't have to fucking deal with this guy anymore, right? So I get off the plane. And as I'm standing there trying to figure out where my connecting flight gate is, this fucking jerk-off comes walking off the plane 
and he's still wearing the blanket. He's got it wrapped around him. Oh, by the way, he was also, of course, wearing sandals. You know, like all animals do. They just they have to have their feet out. You know, like animals. Animals are all barefoot. They don't have shoes, right? So these guys have sandals because they're half an animal. Like you know what I mean? If you're in a hot climate or you're fucking at the beach or whatever, going down to the pool, the spa, that look, that's sandals. Anyways, so he comes walking off the plane and then just walks up to the you know those those little fucking cars that they drive fat people around and old people, blind people and stuff, you know. And uh, he walks up to one of those guys and goes, excuse me, sir. He goes, what do I do for the next five hours while I wait for my flight? And that's when I was like, all right, this guy's, <laughs> this guy's fucked up. And the guy's like, uh, I, it's a food court. <laughs> <laughs> so then he walks up to the ticket lady. Now I'm just standing there watching him because I got enough time because now it's entertaining watching him meet people. And watching them doing the math on their face, you know, is this you see it on their face like, what the fuck am I dealing with? So he talks to the ticket agent, freaks her out, then comes walking back and he walks up to the car and he just goes, he goes, sir, where are you taking me? <laughs> so, and you pop psychologist, the guy finally just goes, there's a food court down there. And they just wandered off still wearing the blanket. Now, my buddy that I'm working with this week, he was trying to say that he thought the guy was on pills. I have no idea what the fuck it was, but uh, it was hilarious. But anyways, the level of fucking animal. So that guy was there. There was another guy on my flight. He was wearing pajama, po- pajama bottoms, and he had a neck, pi- neck pillow. I mean, I don't even know where to go from that. There was another guy who had the worst hat I've ever seen, and he was carrying a hard shell case for the hat you know what i mean or maybe that was his good hat and he was wearing his bad hat on the flight i don't know it's like what, what are you running for president in 1905 and some shit like you're riding on a goddamn who has a fucking hat box what kind of a man has a hat box and it was a solid plastic one like like a snare drum case but it was for a fucking hat um so for whatever reason i get here to the hotel and i'm reading about this plane crash Air Canada flight 624, they say the timeline of the crash, right? 10.05, the plane leaves. 10.56, Air Canada tells flight crew uh, that an Air Canada flight had landed on Halifax runway 05 after a missed approach due to insufficient visibility. Because of weather conditions, controller tells the crew to hold at 9,000 feet. Blah, 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 right? The fucking crew... Asked to confirm that the lights are on, setting five. Controller says they're on four. They'll eventually be on five. They remain on four. Long story short, this fucking guy flying this thing, he ends up hitting like a snowbank, some lights. He's fucking hitting shit off the plane. They go slide down the runway, and they come to a stop. It says aircraft comes to a rest about 1,900 feet beyond the threshold. Okay. This is like how scary this was. Um, Captain disconnects the autopilot and plane makes automated calls. They are 100 and then 50 feet above the land. Co-pilot says to pull up. Uh, The AC, the Air Canada 624 severs an electric power line, cutting power to the airport terminal. Captain advances thrust levers to to the takeoff go around and pulls side stick to the full nose up position a left main tire hits an approach light 861 feet from the runway threshold the main landing gear aft lower fuselage and left engine cowling strike the snow covered ground on an embankment sloping towards the runway the plane strikes the localizer antenna um, and continues airborne before striking the ground twice more and sliding along the runway. So this is what people are dealing with. You guys ever see that Louis C.K. episode where they were coming in for a landing, everyone was screaming bloody murder? That's what I picture. And I picture Louis on this flight for whatever reason. Um, <laughs> aircraft comes to a rest 1,900 feet beyond the threshold. It is completely lost power. Tower control act- activates crash alarm. As passengers complete evacuation, firefighters arrive at the accident site. Now listen to this. 
listen to this. This is at 12:36 when the firefighters show up. This is what they see when the passengers are out on the runway. Now this is a fucking snowstorm that they flew into. Passengers, many wearing open-toed shoes, shorts, and t-shirts, and carrying baggages, baggage, are grouped about 200 meters behind the aircraft in frigid temperatures. Occupants with more severe injuries sit in the emergency vehicles. I mean, what kind of a fucking asshole gets on a goddamn flight in the middle of a snowstorm wearing open-toed fucking shoes, sandals, shorts? You know, next time I get on a flight and I see those people getting on, all I'm, all I'm going to be thinking is when we go down in the fucking Himalayas, these are going to be the first people to get eaten, you know? Or they're going to be the first people that you're going to have to kill. Because they're going to be fighting you for your fucking shoes. Um, I don't even know what the point of all of that was. All I'm just saying is just the level of animal that is at the fucking airport. And you know what's funny, too? Like, it's just the way when you're walking through an airport, you can't really see. You don't really see it, you know? Like, the demographic that you're in. You don't see it until you get to your gate. Like... I didn't get the level of animal that was going to fucking Winnipeg until I got to the gate that was flying to Winnipeg because it's like, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, uh, it's like a mixed drink. You can't taste the fucking alcohol. Right. But then when you get to the gate, when you get to your gate, wherever the fuck you're going, barring a few tourists who are just going to visit, that is a straight shot of what the fuck you're, you're about ready to walk into pajama bottoms with a neck pillow. Um, it's like whenever I'm in New York and I, I'm going to L.A., it's like you look at the, you're at the airport. It's like these people all look like New Yorkers. And then all of a sudden you get to the gate that's going to L.A. and you see the chick with the Botox. You know, you see the guy with the fake tan. You start seeing the gaudier way of dressing. It's like, all right, these are L.A. people, you know. And then all of a sudden when you get off in L.A., they totally blend in with people at the fucking airport. I don't know. I always found that interesting. Well, good, Bill, because we didn't. I'm sorry. 